Hi everyone, I'm going to be taking you through a journey. So I'd like you all to close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes. This presentation just got a lot easier. <laughs> now keep your eyes closed. I want you to visualize beautiful green landscapes, humongous mountains, water flowing to rivers. Smell your favorite Asian dish. Is it lamb huna, butter chicken, paneer masala? It's so real you could taste it in your mouth. Hear the noise of a big Asian wedding, the drums, the music, the laughter. Open your eyes. I hope I was able to make you feel what it's like to be from my country, Bangladesh, a country of hope. But behind the smile, the laughter, the joy and excitement, you have a developing nation. Now raise your hands if you have an iPhone. OK. Uh, Shakila, how much do you think the top of the line iPhone costs? Close, close. It's 1,500 pounds. 1,500 pounds is the GDP per capita of Bangladesh. So what you have in your pocket, Shakila, can pay for the living costs of a family for a whole year. But Bangladesh isn't alone. It happens to be one of many countries considered developing nations. In fact, according to the UN, almost half the world's population struggle to meet basic needs, such as food, shelter, and water. By investing in developing nations, you're solving these problems. You're able to make a huge impact in people's lives. But there's also an opportunity for growth. According to uh, Forbes, 70% of the world growth will come from developing nations in the next few years. And that's because of the rapid growing economy and population. So, so basically, my talk is to inspire you and look at new technologies. Every now and again, we come across a technology like the telephone, the PC, the internet, that changes everything. I believe we have one such technology right in front of our eyes, artificial intelligence, otherwise known as AI. And I hope my talk will inspire you and allow you to see the potential of investing in artificial intelligence in developing nations so that you can all lead and others can follow. So what is AI? To put simply, AI comprises of a number of different technologies and algorithms that analyze data and gives computers the ability to learn. It may be able to make its own decisions, visually recognize objects, understand speech. Some examples are self-driving cars, Uber, which calculates prices based on location, time, and availability of drivers. Autonomous robotic vacuums. And of course, Google Translate. As you can see, just with a click of a button, I translated English to Bangla. So what does the future of AI hold? According to a report from PwC, within the next 10 years, AI has the potential to add $15 trillion to the global economic output. For context, Microsoft took 40 years to reach a trillion dollar valuation. It also states that it will increase the global GDP by 14%. Imagine that. So as you can see, this is by no means a charity talk. But in fact, along with positively impacting people's lives, it's an opportunity for growth. So, how does AI impact developing nations? I believe there are four different areas. Education, agriculture, disaster relief, and healthcare. Now I want you to put your imagination glasses on and let us revisit a time in history by imagine a fully developed AI ecosystem already existing within the country. And let's look at the world through a young student's eyes. It's 2010, Haiti's about to get hit by an earthquake. Samantha's in school, studying maths through an AI-powered system. 
It identifies that she has a weakness for multiplication and tries to specifically improve that. She then looks out the window. She notices robots in the farm. They're identifying which fruit is ripe and which isn't and picking them accordingly on their own. The earthquake takes place. The students are taken out to safety. She then notices drones hovering in the air. They're taking images which are cross-referenced with satellite images to provide emergency services with directions that does not have any obstructions. She then hears a noise, drones, planes flying in the air. They have identified which areas are most densely populated and are providing medical supplies to those locations through parachutes. So I know what you're thinking. Thanks, Faisal, for the fairy tale story from the year 2300. Great. I can assure you we're a lot closer than you think. These images are all taken from existing companies who are carrying out similar problems, but simply scaled up. In China, Squirrel AI is working on adaptive learning and already opened up centers in over 200 cities. In the UK, Dogtooth, and I promise you, they should probably work on that name, but yeah, um, they've combined computer vision with AI to identify which fruit is ripe and pick them accordingly. After the 2015 earthquake in Nepal, Fuse machines combined drone imagery with AI to remodel the city and aid with the infrastructure development. And finally, Ghana. Ziplines already providing 13 million people with medical supplies through drones and parachutes. Imagine that. So as you can see, the opportunities are out there for you to act now and pave the way for the future. So how many of you believe the AI will lead to job loss? Quick raise of hands. OK, almost 50-50 there. But we've heard this before. <coughs> Whenever disruptive technology comes into play, there's a fear of job loss. And this article from 1928 states, the construction building material is mixed like dough and placed into a location by a machine without a touch of a human hand. And you can sense the fear in this article, the fear of job loss, because it causes 10 to 12 jobs to be displaced. Can you guess what this machine is? A cement mixer. Are we worrying about this today? We're not. So machines took jobs in factories, farms, but yet jobs still persist. It's easy to see the jobs that are lost. It's difficult to visualize the jobs that are created. I'll explain to you what this means through this diagram. Let's look at this together. So new technology creates jobs in a few ways. You have the direct jobs for the people who create and maintain the technology. And sometimes new, in new industries are created. The part we forget is the indirect effect of labor-saving technology. When companies can do more with less, they can expand, maybe add new products, or open new locations, or lower their prices so that consumers can buy more of their product. And if they don't want to buy more of their product, then they can buy other things, like get more haircuts, or attend more dinners, go to more sports events. This is how ultimately the standard of living has improved over time and has resulted in New jobs. <laughs> so don't take my word for it. Let history answer for you. Let's look at the employment rate of, in the US constantly re going up through all the disruptive technologies of the past, the internet, the PC. And I believe it will continue going up through the AI era. So why has AI not been embraced? I believe we, we have the future to look at and we can push through with this technology. I believe when we're looking at this fundamental question, is digital making the world a better place? I personally believe, yes, it is. But I think we can do so much more. 
So working in developing nations means that you have the opportunity to start fresh without having to worry about legacy systems or regulations, where you can create fair regulations and push forward quickly. Working in AI technology in developing nations means you're able to increase your credibility, which will in return remove doubts when working with your clients in developed countries. So I guess what you're thinking is, how do we act now? So it's, it's easy to see the why and the what, but how can we act to make the most of it? How can you make sure that this is a success, having AI solutions in developing nations? I believe there are two elements to this. Element one, the strategy. We have an award-winning CSR team. Let's use their expertise. We have base locations in so many different countries. Let's give accountability to those in developing nations. And if they aren't there, let's create them. And finally, Atos runs an IT challenge every year. Last year, participants came up with solutions that were sustainable to solve the world's biggest problems through AI technology. Let's push these initiatives, see where they take us. Now for element two, mindset. A few weeks ago, me and 19 others climbed the three highest mountains in the UK. It was in England, Scotland, and Wales. We overcame so many different challenges, like torrential rain, gale winds, we even climbed one of the mountains in complete pitch darkness, believe it, with a torchlight for six and a half hours. I was only able to do this because of the support of my teammates, because we helped each other and worked with each other. I know that implementing AI in developing uh, worlds is going to be a challenge, but I want you to look around the room, to your colleagues, to your friends. We're 120,000 strong, I believe we can overcome any challenge if we all work together. I believe together we will change the world. Thank you.